Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, respected uh, ambassadors, colleagues, my friends. Uh, very good afternoon. I hope you are enjoying the session so far. We are dealing with a topic which um, uh, is affecting the lives of every one of us, irrespective of what profession we are in. I'm also very grateful to the organizers, Swami and team, and my sincere apologies for not showing up there. I was really looking forward to come back to Uppsala, simply because uh, I've had some very, very good associations there. So uh, apologies on that. I'm sure Mayank has already spoken to you in detail on what PI is doing today, where it wants to go, and what changes uh, it, uh, it is making as we go forward in terms of understanding the plant, the pathogen, and the environment. Uh, previously, it was only the plant and pathogen. Today, I think uh, nothing will happen if we do not understand what uh, changes the environment is bringing. So I'm going to talk about one specific aspect of uh, agricultural practice, and that is uh, the use and introduction of uh, biologicals as uh, a support. I'm being very careful in saying that it is not an a, a alternative, but as a support uh, to help uh, plant protection, plant uh, health, as well as soil regeneration. So before I go into my slides, one word on what does biologicals mean? Because in uh, different areas, it probably refers to slightly different uh, uh, context. So in the pharma, biologicals generally refers to uh, any metabolite or any part or chemical that the body makes, which is then made by biotechnological means, and that's uh, referred to as biologicals. There are various definitions, but I'll leave it at that. In the agricultural area, we are basically talking uh, biologicals as microbes, microbe secreted or produced uh, metabolites, or metabolites by themselves purified from microbes, which can also be made through bi uh, biotechnological uh, means. So that's the broad definition of uh, biologicals that I'm talking about. If you can go back to the previous slide, Biologicals is not new. It's been around for, if you will see, way back there was uh, antifungals being used and then you had, uh, um, in fact, BT came in as early as uh, <clears throat> in the 1920s. And then we, you know, you know, many of the things that we're even using today, like Bacillus subtilis or Trichoderma have been around for decades. So it's not that biologicals is coming in brand new, new concept, no, but we've obviously improved on what is available and how we're going to use them more efficiently. Now, if you go to the next slide, I briefly, if you look at how agricultural patterns have changed, and this for me is a fascinating um, um, the line that if you look from early 1900s to where we are today, started with small farms. And then in the early 1990s, the late 1990s, and then quickly realized that small uh, farms are uh, difficult to manage in terms of labor and uh, ability to uh, the, produce larger amounts as far as demand is concerned. So we moved from that economic size farms actually drove to larger farms, which obviously then said we needed mechanization to deal with that. So we had tractors and then we went from normal general farming to precision farming. Then came the concept that, okay, we've got larger farms, we got mechanization, we need to do something of making the irrigation more efficient. 
So we went in from traditional methods to today we, there's a lot more on drip and precision irrigation. So if you look at this flow, then comes the fertilizers, soil management, crop protection, and finally, where are we today? We are uh, talking about uh, using big data. And what does that mean? That means that we are, we are capable of generating lots and lots of data points from different parts of the farm, from different plants in the farm, uh, we are able to see what's the nutrition level, what's the humidity, so on and so forth. But then data has to be converted to knowledge. And that's where I think today there is lots more and more of uh, AI-driven, ML-driven activities where we can collect these data and see how we can best use them. I'll come touch upon this at the very end of my talk. So what I wanted to show you in this slide well, if we just look how one has driven the other. Size of the farm has driven mechanization. Mechanization is asked to become more efficient irrigation. And then obviously we went into crop protection and now we are talking about uh, how to use these various data points. Uh, so that's to me the broad cycle of how this whole area of farming has uh, developed. If you go to the next slide, you ask the question, I said previously, biologicals are not new. So ask why biologicals? What's driving biologicals today? And why do we need to bring it in? Farmers need biologicals to grow crops. This is a very sort of a 37,000 feet uh, statement, but an imperative need for technologies which improve soil health. Now, that is something which is, you know, decades ago we recognized, but right now we are saying the soil has come to certain conditions where it is no longer producing at the same level as where we started off uh, decades ago. We need to do something to regenerate the soil. We need to do something to bring it better health, or in other words, how do you bring in the biodiversity that was there originally, which has got sort of skewed uh, by use as well as by the use of various uh, chemical pesticides? Okay, so having come to biologicals, then you ask the question, all right, is this just a concept where we're talking about uh, biologicals, uh, uh, you know, academically sounds good, should we be working on it type? No. If you will see, <clears throat> biologicals is, uh, is a great business opportunity today. We are, uh, lots and lots of farmers have actually used it, have found it useful, and that's why there is a great demand for it. That's one part of the story. The other part of the story is that, like we said, biologicals have been around for a long period of time, microbes to help plant health, but are we there at the same level? No. Clearly, biotechnology has allowed us now to take advantage of the various technologies available to improve on how to uh, address these uh, problems, issues, as well as how we can look at prevention. So new generations of biologicals are available, which are more efficient, which are more compatible with soil health and biodiversity. Lastly, I think, which is uh, uh, the one of our biggest issues and, um, and one of the topics that uh, this forum is addressing is uh, climatology. There has been huge uh, unpredictability on climate changes. Chemicals cannot address those because chemicals address more a plant pathogen relationship, but do not address the environment as a whole. Biologicals give you that opportunity where you can get the plants to be more resilient, to be more uh, ability to more um, ward off uh, invaders when there is uh, stress, as well as when there are uh, adverse conditions. So today, biologicals are not just a lab academic concept. 
it's gone from being that to something which is much more user friendly as well as commercially viable simply because the farmers have accepted it. We need to go back two slides, please. One more. All right, so if you go to the next slide, go forward, please. All right, so what is our understanding of biologicals? I'm talking about biologicals, you know, and it's a, it's a vast area. Just quickly tell you, we classify them into various generations, first to the fifth generation, and probably you're going to get many more as we go forward. First is what we used to use previously, a microbe. Uh, second is a microbe plus a metabolite. Third is a purified metabolite. And the fourth and fifth generations are new technologies like uh, peptides, uh, synthesized metabolites, um, and uh, the newer biologicals, uh, which are not there, but clearly conceptually, we are every day seeing new and new uh, innovations coming. This is, we are talking about RNA and DNA. So we've got a whole host of these uh, biologicals from the first generation to the fifth generation and probably the nth generation. And it's not that we, we will jump from one to five. I think each one of them plays a role as far as soil biodiversity is concerned, soil preservation is concerned. So we expect that uh, that uh, we will be using these uh, in a more coordinated fashion. we we'll go to the next slide, please. All right, so this is just to give you a glimpse of the world of biologicals. It's not as simple as uh, um, the word biologicals itself uh, is what we're talking about. We've got, we classified them into fertilizers, stimulants, uh, pesticides, biocontrol agents, and so on. And you can group them based on what response they elicit in, uh, in the plant. This is ex an extremely important statement that I'm making. We are not talking about just going and dealing with the pathogen. We are talking about a specific response that we can elicit in the plant using a biological. And that response in terms, in turn, helps the plant, perhaps on one hand, to wade off the, uh, the pathogen. On the other is to deal with its own metabolism in terms of uh, uh, the abiotic stress, uh, in terms of uh, different issues that the, that the <clears throat> microbial flora around it brings in. So this is where biologicals can, are very different from chemicals. They bring in that specificity which allows you to deal with a specific problem. Of course, it also involves, uh, you know, you can talk about narrow spectrum versus more broad spectrum. If you, if you induce resistance in a plant, then obviously it's a broad spectrum. But then the moment the biological uh, effect is gone, the plant is back to its normal uh, shape. So if we go to the next slide, just to give you an idea of uh, how newer um, information, new information that is coming uh, has, uh, is impacting our use of biologicals. Genome sequence. We are understanding plant genome sequence. It's not just the sequence that we are understanding. We are understanding the interplay of the various genes, the environment, as well as we are now very much advanced into synthetic biology, which allows us to design and develop specific biologicals. Second, I think, which is a very big advantage is that biologicals are generally in their respect. Some of them are designed to be pathogen specific or stage specific. In the example, we can induce uh, resistance in the seed. But what's more important, it does not disturb the biodiversity of the soil, which I think is, uh, uh, if, you, if you look at how we're going to deal with uh, uh, 
uh, what has already happened in terms of uh, the, the changes. We need to bring back the microflora, which was there uh, generations back. And biologicals don't disturb that. Biologicals add to that uh, biodiversity. They can increase tolerance uh, in, uh, in the plant so that uh, it can uh, deal with the various stresses which uh, it, it comes across. I'm sorry, I'm having a problem of not being able to see my slide. Just give me one second. All right, and the last one is, uh, we, like I said, resistance is not an issue because this is plant um, driven and uh, they actually, the biologicals act on essential systems in the plant so that there is no way uh, of developing resistance against it. And the last one is we have learned using the various technologies how to scale up, how to make more of it, how to purify it, how to make sure we have quality control on this, and lastly, how we can apply them. Underlying all this is one significant um, aspect of biologicals, which I kept saying is that they induce a certain response. And inducing a response requires very small amount of material. So technically, the amount of biologicals that you need to induce a response vis-a-vis what you need as stoichiometry in a chemical pesticide is very different. You need much, much lower amounts of the biological, which also adds to your cost of goods, which helps in your cost of goods, as well as minimum disturbance with the plant metabolite. Mm -hmm. The last two slides, I will just um, talk a little bit on PI. PI has a number of, previous slide, please, a uh, number of products, which are already in the market, which are making, uh, which um, has allowed PI to get into the biological space. These are biostimulants, some of them are biostimulants, pesticides, and some of them are also helping in soil health. Now, where do we want to go from here? And I think this is not just PI thinking, it is a thinking across the agriculture sector. And PI as usual, um, my aunt sitting there must have already said this, is basically trying how to leverage the science to convert to a technology which then comes back to use. So we are looking at crop protection, we are looking at crop solutions, we are also making sure that these are compatible with the diversity that we are talking about. And my last point uh, before I stop is where do you, where do you want where does PI want to go? We uh, spent a lot of effort in accumulating data using digital technology. We want to be able to use this data to predict crop stress due to external factors. There are three players, if you'll remember that I said, it's the plant, it's the pathogen, it's the environment. External factors may not be completely predictable today, Excuse me. But we hope that as we go forward, even if we get waves that we can understand. Today we are talking about waves of uh, vaccination, waves of which we can say, okay, this is bound to happen in, down the line. We should be able to build a library of biologicals, both biostimulants and biopesticides, and we are on the way to do this so that we can react appropriately to these changes. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak to you and uh, back to you. Thank you. Thank you.